Do you like Rachel Maddow? What about Karl Marx? Did you or someone you know post a BLM square? Be honest. Does seeing Bernie Sanders make you go, Hey, this is Bernie Sanders. I, I love that guy. Is Orange Man bad? Joe Biden bad too? Do you like watching this a beautiful baby boy get pwned? If you answered yes to any of these questions, well, congratulations, you've won. You, won. you might be a leftist or a liberal or a tanky or some uh, other combination between all of those things. In which case, this video is for you. Hi, my name's Noah. And as the title suggests, this is my practical guide to, to leftist, leftist YouTube. YouTube. You might be asking, Noah, what's leftist YouTube? And I'd say, just wait a second, I'll tell you. And then you'd say, okay, sorry for interrupting. And then I'd say, all right, thanks. Leftist YouTube is a loose category of video essayists, streamers, and content creators whose work is often informed by leftist politics or theory. But a better way to put it is some YouTubers who sometimes make leftist content because they make other stuff too. People like to use the term BreadTube, which is a reference to an old book and the name of the largest leftist YouTube subreddit. But since there's conflicting opinions on who and what BreadTube is and all the largest creators associated with it want nothing to do with it, I think the general term leftist YouTube is a little more useful. So that's what I'm gonna be using. I was inspired to make this last month when I discovered this part of YouTube and was absolutely blown away at how good the videos are and how I'd somehow never heard about it and a lot of people I know hadn't either. So basically I've worked on this project for a month straight just for it to end up saying, hey, check this, sh check that shit out. I sent you something, check it out. Put, look at the thing I sent you. Hey, watch the link, I sent you a link. But my goal here is twofold. First, create a resource for people who might be leftist adjacent but haven't discovered any leftist creators on YouTube yet. The second goal is to connect people who are already familiar with the space with other great leftist creators that they haven't found yet, including some smaller and more theory focused channels. The leftist YouTube community has smart, funny, talented people giving their perspectives on every topic. Class, race, immigration, trans and non-binary rights, feminism, political theory, film and media critiques, whatever issues most resonate with you, someone out there is making some great content about them. Unless they aren't, in which case you should do that. Start a YouTube channel. Be your own boss. Become a business empire mogul. Be your own boss hog. <laughs> Supply and demand. It's the free market, baby. Trickle down economics. I'm Ron Paul and I approve this message. I think it makes the most sense to sort leftist content creators by the format of their work. This is not a hard science, but generally we have five different categories. Video essayists, live streamers, commentary channels, news channels, and theory tube, which is a term I just made up. And then at the end, we'll look at some really great smaller channels, most of which are like 10 times my size, but you know, smaller in relation to the bigger ones. So group one, the video essayists. These creators are some of the most prominent and influential to leftist YouTube. They're often credited with driving the movement into the mainstream, making it legal to say controversial things on YouTube, like trans people are, are real or racism. Let's cut, why don't we cut it out? Pro th maybe. This list includes ContraPoints, H-Bomber Guy, Sean, Philosophy Tube, Big Joel, Three Arrows, and Innuendo Studios. There are plenty more, of course, but these are the people I feel like are the best to start watching because their content is the most accessible and composed, and honestly, just some of the best stuff on the platform uh, in my... IMO. IMO. Everyone here clearly puts an extensive amount of time and effort into the research, writing, and overall production of their work, and this creates videos that are timeless and also incredibly useful. You can send their work to pretty much anyone, and assuming that person has a little time to sit down and watch, the videos do a great job of informing, entertaining, and potentially changing someone's mind. Or brain. First up, we have Natalie Wynn, aka ContraPoints. ContraPoints is arguably the most visible and influential channel to leftist YouTube. She's one of the few people to have received mainstream coverage for her work on the platform, specifically her role in preventing young, disaffected men from falling down YouTube's alt-right rabbit hole. One of the ways she's been able to accomplish this, which is also what makes her videos especially important, is that she approaches every topic with empathy. She goes above and beyond in understanding all sides of a conflict and portraying the human element of why these conflicts exist and why they so rarely come down to a good versus evil binary. That's on top of being very funny and having some of the most well-produced, uniquely artistic videos on YouTube. In the spirit of great production value, I'm wearing a fake mustache right now. I just installed it last 
this today for this video. The subject matter is rarely single actions or events. Instead, she addresses the underlying ideologies that are to blame. Transphobia, fascism, racism, sexism, transmedicalism, homophobism. You know, listing out all these isms is so tiring. Can we please, can we get rid of one? Just one, please. Guys, stop with the ism. ContraPoints is one of the few channels that I can comfortably say you should wa watch all of her videos. There's only 28 of them. That's barely two Breaking Bad seasons. Don't act like you didn't do that at least once in the past year with the hot Cheetos in your hand, you little sick little freak. Come here. Kiss me. But in the interest of keeping things practical, here are five videos from ContraPoints that I recommend you watch and why. Her most viewed video is a deep dive into the incel community, titled Incels, and it's a good example of all the things that make ContraPoints videos special. A deep understanding of the topic, which she then relays to us, the persistent hilarious interjections, that empathy thing I was just talking about. In this video, I don't want to mock incels or lecture them or even sympathize with them. I just want to understand who they are and why they're like this. And of course, the artistic flair in what you see while you watch. She very thoroughly maps out the incel worldview and then speaks directly into the camera in an attempt to get through to them. It is powerful stuff. If you want to know why conservatives freak out over pronouns and why it's really stupid, watch this. Are all of us deluded about my biology? No. It is not I who misunderstands biology, Ben Shapiro. It is you who misunderstands language. You have deceptively framed the debate as a debate about biology, which it is not. We all agree on the biology. The actual subject of the debate is the proper use of words, such as he, she, man, and woman. Ben Shapiro has been quiet ever since. So we are going to indoctrinate children into the wonders of various sexual orientations and the complete moral relativity of human sexuality. Just kidding. Of course he hasn't. But this video really does point out the massive flaw in reasoning behind pronoun hysteria and dunks on our little baby boy in the process. For a remarkably nuanced view of J.K. Rowling's latest, um goofs, shall we call them? Watch her most recent video, JK Rowling. She's able to approach this from a number of different perspectives, including her perspective as a trans woman. That's just my observation as a, as a cis. Sissy. I'm one of them cisgenders. If you're somehow still a big fan of Jordan Peterson in 2021, uh, watch this one. It's full of great stuff. They've got control over most low to mid-level bureaucratic structures. And, and, and many governments as well, but, but even in the United States where, you know, a lot of... Damn, son, where'd you find this? For a little more of a brief introduction to ContraPoints, I think you should watch the second oldest upload on her channel titled The Left. It's a very funny Socratic dialogue which critiques leftist political strategy and optics and has some great characters like the anarcho-communist cat girl, the pragmatist leftist, the centrist, and of course, the fascist. It's only 14 minutes long, which is about as short of a video as you're going to find in all of Left Tube. Her JK Rowling video is an hour and a half and Canceling, another great video, is an hour and and 40 minutes. They're both worth the time, of course, but like much of leftist YouTube, you gotta kind of treat them almost like movies. Pour some Chardonnay. Watch it with your family and friends. So yeah, that's ContraPoints. Person number, uh, YouTube, leftist YouTube number two person, Harry Brewis, aka H Bomber Guy. Mr. Bomber Guy makes video essays covering all types of media. He reviews films, TV shows, and video games, but his standing as a prominent leftist YouTuber is attributed to his many hilarious videos which debunk right wing myths and make fun of misogynist, racist, homophobic, all the, all the stuff. Idiots that have pervaded the alt right anti feminist YouTube space since around 2014. His video essays are energetic, filled with tightly edited sarcastic wittiness, wit, wittiness, humor. What, whichever word, and always do a phenomenal job of highlighting the examples of why all the most famous online conservatives your high school friends might still be watching are not worth paying another second of attention to. M merging politics and science, not allowing them to exist uh, autonomously of each other, can only serve to alter science's trajectory to the path of truth. Okay, that, that, that's the main purpose here, and Bill Nye wants that specifically. Some examples? I know it seems tired and old hat, but let's go to Nazi Germany. You heard me right. If scientists try to make the government listen to the effects of global warming and do something about it, 
It's the same as the Holocaust. With Steven Crowder, it's honestly a laugh a minute, watching him flip-flop between comparing everyone he doesn't like to the Nazis and their genocides, and complaining that way too many people are comparing things to the Nazis nowadays, especially those leftists, who are the only ones that do it. H Bomber Guy has two main video series. The first is his measured responses. They've tackled issues ranging from the cultural Marxism conspiracy theory to the war on Christmas to flat earthers to climate denial, which of course gave us this mi gem, meme, gem of a meme, gene. Let's say for the sake of argument that all of the water levels around the world rise by, by let's say five feet over the next hundred years, say 10 feet by the next hundred years. And it puts all the low lying areas on the coast underwater, right? Which let, let's say all of that happens. You think that people aren't going to just sell their homes and move? Just one small problem! Sell their houses to who, Ben? Fucking Aquaman! The second video series is more focused on media reviews, which I will happily contend are some of the funniest, most detailed, and well-argued video essays in all of YouTube. His most recent upload, a stunningly in-depth review of the history of the anti-vax movement, is something I'd recommend both watching and sharing, especially if you have people in your life that are still apprehensive about getting vaccinated. Instead of shouting at your anti-vax aunts and uncles over the Thanksgiving Day dinner table, just send them the video. There's a 10% chance they'll watch it, as is the case with anything you ever send anyone, but if they do, there's a 100% chance that they will at least laugh a little bit and then maybe become more receptive to conversations about vaccines. On top of these positive contributions to the platform over the years, he's done a lot of good for other online leftist spaces as well, like when he raised over $350,000 for a trans youth organization during a Twitch stream in 2019. It's actually a pretty amazing story. Watch this video if you want to learn more about that. Or just recently starting a grant program primarily focused on supporting LGBTQ artists of color. The positive impact of H-Bomber Guy's work on online leftist communities is hard to overstate, and his influence on the video essay genre as a whole is especially inspiring as a small-time content creator myself. Epic video essay tuber number three is Sean. Sean's videos debunk right-wingers, deep dive into historical topics, and push back against shitty conservative narratives with incredibly meticulous reasoning and a very dry sense of humor. He was described in a Polygon article as being quite possibly the most drawl human on the internet. I can't say I disagree with that. These video essays are all a masterclass in argumentation, in the way that he takes you through all of the evidence, weighs it against the claims being made, and arrives at strong, clear conclusions. Many such conclusions can be summarized as, hey, that, that guy's a, a fucking idiot or a white supremacist, so you should probably stop watching them now. But there's something about the way he does it that's just very entertaining. And uh, yeah, this is what the all the videos look like this. Just um, a skull. Apparently the skull is a reference to this one old Nazi YouTuber Davis Arini's videos, but he really does keep it simple visually and relies on a thorough script and whatever visual examples are necessary. This is a deviation from the stylistical flair of some of the other leftist YouTubers, yet this doesn't detract from the content at all. It's very matter of fact, just, you know, putting the evidence on the table very succinctly. Bare bones, you might call it. Bare, like a skull. Well, sc Bones, scully bones. One of the funnier YouTube comments I've seen in a while is from the Blue Beret, who wrote, "It's my sleepover, and I get to pick the movie." On Sean's video, dropping the bomb, Hiroshima and Nagasaki, which is a two-hour and twenty-minute-long video essay. I find this comment funny because it speaks to the difficulty of trying to explain to someone why you'd ever want to watch a two-hour and twenty-minute YouTube video of a picture of a skull. But that's that's Sean's videos. So, dropping the bomb sets out to challenge the commonly retweeted told historical narrative that the atom bombs being dropped on Japan during World War II were justified, and it accomplishes that in one of the best video essays I think I've ever seen. If you want something less 2 hours and 20 minutes-y, his PragerU debunk videos are all great. The fake outrage videos of Doom and Cuphead both hilariously cover anti-SJW YouTube's freak out over the minuscule backlash that happened when those games were released. Another personal favorite video essay and one I'd recommend watching is one 
of his earliest uploads, a response to YouTuber Black Pigeon Speaks video titled, Do Women Destroy Civilizations? Wow, what a great question, YouTuber. He goes through Black Pigeon Speaks video with a level of patience I wouldn't have thought possible given that the guy's central claim can be summarized as, women are biologically predisposed to being the literal devil. Even today, many women seek out aggressive men, whether consciously or not, as it seems that this psychology has been ground into women after countless years of our species evolution. That means criminals, gangsters, and mass murderers are always going to be more attractive to women than hard-working, honest men. They always have been, they always will be. Now I won't deny that a certain number of people are attracted to that sort of notoriety, but I guarantee if you ask the average woman if she'd rather marry an average, honest, hard-working guy, or Charles fucking Manson, she's gonna pick the guy without the swastika tattoo on his forehead. Sean is one of the original undertakers of the leftist YouTube response video format, diving headfirst into debunking PragerU, anti-feminists, white nationalists, transphobes, and many others before it was cool, as far back as 2015, I think. Some uploads have been privated, I believe. And the fact that he's been so successful in doing so says a lot about why leftist YouTube is so important. There's a growing number of people on the platform that are tired of the reactionaries and want to actually know what's going on. And he really gets to the bottom of these things. There are countless comments on his videos from people who've been convinced that their favorite YouTubers were actually pretty bad the whole time. And that's the case with a lot of these creators. So yeah, that Sean, that's Sean. There you go. That's Sean's section. What she started as a project to provide the YouTube world with a free philosophy education, Abigail Thorne turned philosophy tube into some of the best leftist video essay performance artistry content that the platform has on it. She's a philosophy PhD haver and a trained actor and both of these really show in her work. I always come away from her videos with a few more books to read and a couple growths inside my brain that the, but the good kind, not tumors, knowledge growths. Her work analyzing the conservative demagogue types like Jordan Peterson, Steve Bannon, and Ben Shapiro is some of the best of its kind. She maintains a certain level of respect towards the audience of these figures by engaging with their ideas rather than attacking them personally, which is something I'm definitely trying to work on as a, as a fairly fresh new tuber. Not sure how stupid Ben thinks his followers are. This open-endedness is a really powerful tool and one of the few methods that actually gets people to listen to what you have to say when they might not initially agree with you. Anti-echo chamber technology. She came out as trans at the beginning of this year with her video Identity, a trans coming out story, which uh, you should give that a watch. It's like poetic, but she is one of three trans women at the forefront of left tube, which, you know, definitely is something in terms of trans representation in mainstream spaces. Her videos are dramatic, cinematic, grammatically correct and have made me burst out laughing at many random times. Fortunately on this channel we don't care about being right. <laughs> Every episode of Philosophy Tube is wrong. In fact, I refuse to be correct. <laughs> The goal is to be wrong in interesting ways. And it's why she's one of the best in the biz at what she does. So that's, thanks. Big Joel is a genuinely incredible writer. His ability to weave insightful, nuanced commentary into complex narrative analysis is unique and amazing. And it's evident in each of his videos. He's done plenty of film and media critiques, which are all great, but his analysis videos of Prager U, Jordan Peterson, Paul Joseph Watson, and various other goofy conservative boys and girls are what bring him under the leftist YouTube umbrella. He's very articulate and has plenty of funny observations and cool sweaters. His sense of humor is, I would describe as a very likable. Instead, he has to learn that he is good enough. Learn that no matter what Mr. Potter thinks, there is tremendous value in who George is and in what he does for his community and his family. His life isn't bad, it's actually wonderful. Some of his videos feature animations which pair very nicely with his narration. As far as media critiques, some of my personal favorites are his review of Shane Dawson's documentary and his hour-long video essay about the Adam Sandler movie Click and why it's the worst mo movie ever. His writing skills are evident in these media critiques by the way he brings concrete relevant examples to all of his claims. He's able to draw connections between narratives that help illustrate what he's saying. I'd also recommend his micro-analysis type of videos. 
where he deep dives into his observations of small online interactions and speculates on the reasonings behind how and why they happen. Videos like these ones, small YouTube culture, Twitter and empathy, and his latest upload, Twitter and anti-intellectualism. The lady in that video blocked me. Congratulations. Congratulations. He gets philosophical about tweets, and it's very fun to watch. His observations of his op- Fucking bug! He did a video on the Red Pill documentary, which was actually made by my step-cousin, Cassie. So this is me calling out Big Joel. You don't talk shit about my baby- little baby cousin. That's family, and nothing gets but- just kidding, that movie fucking sucked ass. He knocks this video out of the park in terms of analysis and meaningful criticism of both the men's rights activist movement and the documentary itself. So, all in all, 10 out of 10 channel. Three Arrows is a smooth-voiced German guy who utilizes a firm understanding and accurate reading of history to counter the growing presence of online fascist narratives, like Holocaust denialism, misrepresentations of Nazi motivations, and false comparisons between Hitler and Bernie Sanders? Nazi stands for National Socialist German Workers' Party. So put that in your back pocket. Now, let me get to something people will say, I know what you're going to say. National socialism, not democratic socialism like Bernie Sanders. There's a huge, one is fascism right wing, one is not. They're both socialism. Okay. Okay. Time and time again, he's exposed the profound historical incompetence so common to the prominent right-wing reactionary types. He is LeftTube's historian, or as he puts it in his YouTube description, a history baller. I completely agree with that title. One aspect of his response videos that I find hilarious is listening to him try to get over his astonishment that someone could even think of making such a powerfully ignorant mischaracterization of history, like victim blaming the Crusades away. The fact is that these Crusades, the Second Crusades, they were a response to the First Crusades from Islam, from the Muslim onslaught, for hundreds of years, for over 400 years, there was consistent Muslim expansion, aggression, violence. Where to start? Okay. First off, between watching him and Sean, I've definitely developed a higher level of appreciation for history and a yearning to read and understand more of it. I'd always heard that saying, you know, learn history so you don't repeat it in a more abstract way. Like, okay, yeah, Nazism is bad, but, you know, I don't have any plans to become one anytime soon. So we're probably good on that front. But after seeing the many examples of ways that modern political pundits take historical inaccuracies and spin them towards racist, fascist end goals, it really drives home the importance of actually knowing the history. At least knowing it well enough to be able to challenge these false narratives, make them instantly recognizable, and eventually no longer tolerated in civic discussion. This is something I definitely took for granted in my high school history classes. Sorry, Dave. But if you're into history or seeing Nazis get smacked around a little bit, Three Arrows is the channel for you. The last channel I want to mention in the video essay category is Innuendo Studios. He's been making videos for a long time and was one of the first major voices of reason on YouTube when the platform was an absolute dumpster fire of anti-feminist, anti-SJW, alt-right, white supremacist content. If you're unfamiliar with that time period of YouTube or events like Gamergate or just how horribly Anita Sarkeesian was treated, his series Why Are You So Angry is something that I cannot recommend enough. It's a six-part series that tells a fascinating story of essentially how this happened. Another one of the best resources to come out of leftist YouTube is his series, The Alt-Right Playbook. In it, he identifies the various rhetorical and practical strategies employed by the alt-right to push crypto-fascist ideology. No, that's not, has nothing to do with Bitcoin. It's actually, it's like means new fascist. I had to Google that, so. It also does a good job of illustrating how frustrating interactions with online conservatives can be, whether you know them or not, and providing ways to move past this. And you also notice the pattern of the conversation. He says something short, quippy, and wrong. You give a detailed correction. He says something else short, quippy, wrong, and only tangentially related to his last point, and the cycle repeats itself. This goes on and on. He's extremely articulate and well thought out in the writing of his narratives and makes important points while keeping the videos concise and entertaining. All right, okay, there you go. That's the first section done. Done and shipped, stamped and squ squamped. Yeah. Group 
two is the Leftist Live Streamers. This group's primary focus is being a consistent outlet of leftist commentary, providing political analysis on current events, speaking with or debating other online political figures, or combining these things with the most revolutionary praxis of all. Gaming. Nothing about what I'm describing is anti-science. I'm actually describing the scientifically accepted position at the moment. Like, you know that, right? You know that, like, biologists aren't all a bunch of race realists. I'm the one who's standing with the experts on this. They stream daily and are able to pull videos from each stream, hiring editors to cut down and upload them to YouTube, sometimes multiple times a day. This is in contrast with video essayists, who upload much less frequently, but pack a lot more into the production of their content, writing narratives that are more fully composed than stream reaction highlights. There's a debate online as to which of these formats is more helpful or successful, but, I mean, for the purposes of this video. Fuck all that. Damn, They're both son. good. They're just for different audiences and for different types of people. And the end result is the same. More leftist perspectives in larger mainstream spaces. And people really like them. You know, I like watching streams every once in a while. I'll dip my toe into a Twitch. So for this, we'll be looking at three live streamers, Hassan Piker, Vosh, and The Surf's TV. There are plenty of others, but these are the most prominent ones and should be enough to get the ball rolling. Most leftist streamers can be found in dis Discord debate calls with like 47 other streamers at any given time. So if you're into this sort of content, you'll find them eventually. The most prominent political streamer by far is Hassan Piker. Formerly known as Woke Bay for his political handsomeness, he's only been streaming since 2018, but pretty much dominates the leftist Twitch viewership, as well as Twitch viewership generally. While covering the 2020 election, he broke all records when it comes to live viewership of political streams. He was part of the infamous Among Us stream, where AOC, Ilan Omar, and a handful of other famous streamers played Among Us, Among Us to help get those sussy little boxes out to the voting booth. The game was streamed in front of 400,000 people, which still ranks in the top 20 of most watched streams in Twitch history. Pokemon Among Us to the polls. Sorry, sorry, I'm sorry. His Twitch success has translated well to YouTube, with his channel hitting 700,000 subscribers in just over three years of uploading. He does a lot of different stuff on his stream, much of which goes up on YouTube. He watches and responds to reactionary content, people like Ben Shapiro, who he has nicely rebranded as Shabibo. I much prefer that. Crowd poopy girl, Trump hogs, and just general conservative dipshit antics. He covers news stories and is very interactive with his chat. He isn't afraid to debate with or yell at chatters who are having bad takes or need to be educated on things. He's very adept at dealing with conservative talking points and this is a helpful tool to display to people who are watching that may have right-wing friends and family or maybe think that it's a good idea to come into the chat and make those points themselves. Watching small town conservative chatters get dunked on over and over is it's fun for the whole family. You fucking dumb troglodytes, dude. You fuck you. Uh, you disgust me. I'm serious. It's just, you fucking, you are so cringe and so fucking annoying and so disgusting, dude. Hassan has kind of made being a leftist hip and cool and dope fam. 100 Thieves Gucci style. Cash back, cash out cash app compound with his popularity on twitch and connections with other content creators with massive followings giving leftist ideas a bigger platform than they've ever really had he also followed me on twitter a couple weeks back so hi chat poggers pog you pogu as far as content recommendations most of the youtube videos are fairly similar in that they're more reaction focused so if you're not going to watch the stream just browse around the channel a bit until you find someone that you want to see get made fun of real good Vosh is the other most visible political streamer. He streams on YouTube because I guess he got banned from Twitch because he said fuck Israel. To that I say free Palestine and fuck Twitch. And covers all sorts of stuff. Debunking conservative nonsense, debating people on the right and the left. His more edgy style of debate content appeals to a different audience than what might be drawn to longer video essays. He's rhetorically skilled and usually knows his shit. So when Nazis or tankies come onto his stream to try to justify race realism or talk about how gulag were actually pretty fun and dope, they usually end up looking pretty fucking stupid. His YouTube presence is also very strong. He's only been uploading for about two and a half years, but he's well on his way to 400,000 subs and he posts at least once a day on trending and relevant topics. I actually found Vosh when I was researching for a video on critical race theory and his video PragerU is lying to you about critical race theory popped up in the search. And that's a good thing, I'd say, because 
PragerU is always lying to you. However, I will say that most Stream React content seems generally less effective than video essays when it gets put out on YouTube. Because when people like Hassan or Vosh are streaming, their audiences already know why PragerU is trash. So you can find lots of comments on these videos of people that found the videos on YouTube and aren't convinced by the end because they need more engagement with the material than live reacts are able to provide. Still, 200,000 views with a majority positive reaction is better than not having that. Debates, which are one of Vosh's main focuses, have been criticized as being theatrical and competitions. Rather than actually promoting an understanding for the ideas, the more important thing is who won. And I could see that criticism, but an argument for Vosh is that he arms people with rhetoric to use to promote leftist ideas, or defend trans rights, or debunk race realism, or xenophobic white genocide nonsense. And that also makes sense to me. Twitter seems to be pretty harsh on the guy, and they take him out of context a lot, but I mean that's just Twitter. All things considered, Vosh I think usually has pretty good takes, and has had a positive effect on the online leftist space. Vosh is good, actually. If you cancel me for that, this is that's anti-gamer discrimination. The last live stream I want to mention is the Surf's TV. They're a bit smaller in audience size than Hassan or Vosh, but of all the other leftist streamers, it seems to me like Dave Foster is one of the best communities, and they cover news and politics in a really consistent, informed manner. They have a comedy YouTube channel and a news YouTube channel, and their content is all really well produced. It goes beyond edited live stream footage. They have some pretty funny sketches and more narrative-based content as well. Most of the time, I trust their takes, you know? And they're Canadian, so it's good to have a foreign perspective. So far away we wait for- why is that song coming to my head? Hey guys, quick editor's note. Since recording this, the Surfs had a debate with Lauren Southern, and apparently it didn't go well, but regardless of whether it went well or not, um, Lauren Southern is a white supremacist doing a career revival tour, never actually went back on her white supremacist views, so she should not be getting platformed by anyone, especially people on the left. Anyways, back to the show. They also seem to be pretty involved with the leftist online content community, doing things like propping up smaller creators, which is really awesome. They even shared one of my videos during a stream a few weeks ago, which, as a tiny baby-sized creator, it was really motivating. Noah Samson. It's, as the kids say, Le Poggies. There's like 200 people here right now. If, if all 200 of you subscribed, this would go from 4.16 to, to a higher number. Thanks, fellas. I think the more platforms and communities with knowledgeable leftist people there are, the better things are for everybody. So yeah, Surf's TV number, number one. Commentary YouTube is a pretty wide ranging category, and I think most of the popular ones are probably pretty leftist based on their takes. Channels like Jarvis Johnson, Curtis Connor, D'Angelo Wallace, and even my boss, Noel Miller, isn't afraid to get a little lib sometimes. The most famous episode of That's Cringe, with 28 million views, is making fun of the regressive, traditional, modesty, conservative type ladies from Girl Defined. But that's not a leftist YouTube video. You see what I mean? And it makes sense that this is a common trend because conservatives are just not funny. Like who's conservative and funny? Ben Shapiro, Charlie Kirk, Dave Rubin, is that is that your guy, a stand-up comedian? Come on. Seriously? But this next group are what I would consider leftist commentary YouTubers, where most of their content does relate to political or social issues. And in this group we have Cat Black, Sam Collins, For Harriet, Tara Mooney, and RM Brown. What separates them from the video essayists is having some unscripted aspects. Storytelling, solid commentary humor, that kind of thing. Cat Black started out on YouTube in 2010 discussing social justice in educational or video blog style content, and has since done videos with BuzzFeed and had her work shown in classrooms across the country. She has a great weekly unscripted series called True Tea, in which she discusses gender, race, sexuality, beauty standards, her perspective as a black trans woman, among many other things. She's a naturally talented storyteller, so her videos have this open, honest feeling that I find very engaging. As you may have noticed, most of the people we've looked at so far have looked very similar in terms of b being white. And Kat talks about this in her video, Why is Left Tube So White? She brings up some really important observations and criticisms about online leftist communities. How she's noticed that primarily white audiences seem to have an aversion to engaging with content that's made by non-white creators until that content is first vetted by other prominent white leftist YouTubers. What I've found personally is all too often what I say doesn't matter as much as what a white man has said that I said. Now stay with me. 
I have no problem with people criticizing me. I have no problem with people critiquing my points. But I find that all too often, instead of actually engaging with my content, people say, okay, she's black. Okay, she's trans. I've had arguments with a black person. I've had arguments with a trans person. Let me pull from my pre established arguments. But all of her videos are great and her stories are illuminating. Even though she said she doesn't consider herself to be a bread tuber, she's still a leftist YouTuber and a great one at that. And that's why she's on this list and that's why you should go sub to the, her channel. Sam Collins has more laid back content. He usually plays some weird conservative nonsense and then reacts. He's very sarcastic, dry, deadpan, all the things which I personally find very funny. He's a trans guy, so he talks about that sometimes, covers related topics, looks a lot at TikToks. His format is very similar to the prominent commentary YouTubers, but with a, le a leftist touch. From a leftist perspective. Think SJW Cody Co. Just kidding. Well, I mean, kind of. You know, SJW should not be. She is a term of endearment now. Being an SJW is good, actually. Sujubu and proud. For Harriet is a channel run by writer and cultural critic Kimberly Foster, which centers Black feminist issues as video topics. Lately, she's been doing longer live stream type content, but some of her most popular uploads are commentary and reaction videos. She's had a great couple of videos on Candace Owens. For one of them, she had to sit through a two-hour podcast of Owens and Joe Rogan. So let's take a brief moment of silence and then be sure to comment thank you kim in the comments because that's a brave soul doing god's work i found tara mooney recently and she's just very funny some of her biggest videos are her analyzing ben shapiro's sister's channel classically abby which those are great because that lady's fucking weird. Regressive, conservative, modesty, girl boss. Incredibly confusing. But Tara has a pleth plethor pleth a thesaurus of other videos. They're all very well put together. Some of them are more like video essays which contain commentary. But she's done a lot of media critiques and conservative dunking through lenses of gender, beauty standards, and sexism. Her recent video, Darman's War on Gold Diggers, takes a much deeper dive into Darman's antics than you might find anywhere else on YouTube. And apparently all her videos are made by a cow. So make sure you switch on out of that oat milk now. Speaking of cows, PETA tweeted this today. Why would they do that? Why would they do it? The last commentary channel I want to talk about is RM Brown. His channel is smaller than the rest of these, but I, I feel like he fits into this section as a commentary creator pretty well. He's just a genuinely very funny person. He does a lot of PragerU, Shapino, Candace Owens reaction content. I would describe the atmosphere of his videos as very Tim and Eric-like with his cadence and jokes. He also uses a soundboard, which is something that you just don't see content creators doing in the modern age that often. If the vaccines are really about the government trying to say save your life, why do life-saving medicines cost so much? Uh-oh. Whoops. Uh-oh. What? His Zizek impression is really fucking good. You are dropped down into world and must fight your way out. This is how it functions. You are given various tools like the pickaxe and blah blah blah. He also had a really great interview with, with the big bad wolf, Professor Richard Wolf, uh, the Marxian socialist economics professor, which, you know, all interviews with that guy are great. If you've never seen him, he's like if Bernie Sanders got the Captain America serum injected directly into his brain. Socialism is when the government does stop. Professor Wolf has his own channel as well, actually. It looks like he's a drawing influence from the PragerU color scheme here. Subtle psychological manipulation, I like it. For news channels, we have The Majority Report, The Young Turks, David Pakman, and Secular Talk. And yeah, that's... That's the list. There you go. Frequent news style updates, like a newspaper. I don't mean to be dismissive. You know, these are all great channels. They've been doing it for a long time. They cover things very well, but it's just, it's not my cup of tea. You know, one man's cup of tea is another, uh, one cup, one man's not cup of tea is another man's cup of treasure. So watch these folks if you're tired of that MSM for daily coverage.
Okay, next group, almost done. Theory Tube. These channels are more focused on the nitty gritty theory stuff. Socialism, Marxism, anarchism, all that stuff. So if you hate your job because you're underpaid and overworked, doing something that you hate for a company that you don't give a shit about, and you wanna learn more about why that is, then these channels are the ones for you. The function of this part of YouTube is to bring liberals and social democrats further left. It's like a pipeline. Show them why the conservatives they like actually suck. And eventually, hopefully, they will make their way here, which will give them a better understanding of why their former ideologies are flawed through informative content about these theories. I'm still not that literate at all when it comes to theory, but I don't think anyone really has to be. But these channels have definitely provided a lot of thought-provoking content, even if that just means live readings of articles or book recommendations. So let's get, check them out. Muke, whose channel name is Zizixi. Sorry, that's probably wrong, but I found this guy when he tweeted that Vosh unfollowed him over a quote tweet about imperialism, which is really funny to me that I found a really great channel through that. But he's been doing this a while and is very knowledgeable about different aspects of leftism, specifically Marxist theory, and seems to have a thorough understanding of the way in which different leftist ideologies interact online. His last few videos have been great examples of constructive criticism between leftists. His response video to the Gravel Institute's video on profit being theft is very well made, and it seems like the Gravel Institute agreed. While we're talking about it really quickly, you should also check out the Gravel Institute. It's a, it's a leftist Prager you, but not lying all the time. And they actually have cool, very cool art styles. So, so Zixi has a great series called Marks in Minutes, which is a good primer to a lot of these ideas. His animation and visual styles have a really cool aesthetic and make the content content very digestible. Mmm, yummy, digestible content. Hakim is an Iraqi Marxist whose videos are really well written and do a great job of responding to and countering right-wing content as well as critiquing the left as well as covering theory. He said a few videos that make a really interesting and compelling case for why social democracy is inadequate in a lot of ways, mainly the way it will always perpetuate global capitalist exploitation. Not sure if I'm getting that totally right, but videos like this are really helpful and are teaching me that there's so much more to learn than socialism d fucking sick, which is a good feeling. I'm probably right here on this, the curve, the brain curve. Azure Scapegoat has some really great resources on their channel. Their most viewed video with 2.6 million views is a handy guide to understanding the differences between socialism, communism, and Marxism. Other topics covered are democracy in Cuba, various theory-related Q&As, and a recent video about how capitalism causes depression. And it does. Don't lie. Come on. Zoe Baker, known formally as Anarchopac, does videos on Marxist, anarchist, and feminist theory. She's very well spoken, she's working on a PhD in anarchist history, and does a really good job of translating these concepts into more understandable terms. She's one of the best at making theory accessible, which is important because for most people with jobs and kids and stuff like that, keeping up on the readings isn't all that realistic. I'm a freelancer, which means that I'm unemployed, but I still have trouble finding the time to get some reading done. So Zoe is another person who has been very helpful. She also has other interesting videos about different historical subjects. Her most viewed video is about homosexuality in medieval Europe. It's fascinating and definitely one I'd recommend watching. Another great video is My Dark Past, Silly Things I Have Believed, which is super old but talks about why leftists should be more open to discussing their past and admitting to beliefs before they were changed through a lens of her own journey with this subject. All around great stuff. Everybody say thank you Zoe. Thank, thank you Zoe. Zoe. Thank, Thank you, Zoe. Zoe. My cat has shown up for the filming. Say hi, babe. Okay, well, f f f last leg, almost done. Last group, smaller creators. <laughs> Boom, that's the, that's the list, it's on the screen right now. This group is unique in that they have a much broader range of perspectives and material and stylistic approaches. This is inherent to the fact that they are a larger group, but to me this area of YouTube represents a kind of incubation ground for really cool, different stuff. Also, the fact that people making content as articulate, funny, and well-made as these people do and are still small-ish is a crime. For most of these channels, becoming big isn't a matter of if, it's like a matter of when. So I'm getting in early chasing that clout. Just kidding. Let's check them out. 
We Are In Hell is a channel with a great name run by a guy called Sam, who has a great choice of facial hair style. He makes these long form deep dive video essays that incorporate a lot of really funny and interesting elements. They are very reminiscent of the classic bread tube style in the monologue format. He's a great speaker and joke writer and uses sketches and live action footage that give his videos a mockumentary feel at times. He's covered topics like crime, sex work, race and IQ, capitalism, and of course the bread and butter of bread tube, PragerU reactions, and JPDB. He actually has first-hand experience with that last topic as he went to the University of Toronto where Jordan Peterson became Mr. Worldwide doing his shenanigans. Also, Sam was classmates with Jordan Peterson's kids. He gets free content out of that. It's like nepotism, almost, in a weird way. Just kidding. <laughs> I remember a while back when Steven Pinker was talked about a lot for his book, Enlightenment Now. I actually bought that book and I, I didn't finish it because all I could get from it was, yeah, every, it's all good, everything's fine, we're good here, no worries, the world has improved, so don't, don't, don't ask any questions. Damn, son, where'd you find this? Sam covers this phenomenon really well in his latest video, The Cruel Optimism of Steven Pinker, which also features a sick collab with another great leftist channel, Unlearning Economics, which I'll talk about in a moment. His video on anti-maskers is a really cohesive summary of the movement, drawing on history and connecting it to the present day. It's also very funny. He's been making videos for a minute and has started to blow up with his last few, which, you know, you love to see it. Professor Flowers makes video essays and commentary videos on politics, race, whiteness, and media. Her most recent video on Trump-adjacent, confused white rapper Tom McDonald is really good. It's funny, and it's the first time I've seen someone talk about that guy, even though he's like a massive online figure in his own little place, which is terrifying. She's also made some very necessary critiques of the online left. She's asked important questions like, how much of our resources should be spent attempting to convert Nazis? And how can we better discuss race as leftists? particularly with how white the YouTube community is. Lua's video pushes back on the narrative that converting alt-right people takes precedence over the actual perspectives of the marginalized groups that define the leftist community. I don't think it's bad if you want to try to help Nazis to stop being Nazis. I think the less Nazis there are, then it's a better thing. It's good. Not having Nazis is good. But there's just like, there's more to it than that, you know? This narrative seems to be on the rise as people have sort of branded themselves with the reverse Dave Rubin technique. Instead of why I left the left, it's, you know, why I used to be a regressive anti-feminist or a alt-right guy, but now that being progressive makes money, I'm gonna change teams. There's nothing wrong with having less conservatives in the world, but my God, the popular ones now are some smug shitheads. You should watch these videos, but in the second one, she brings up a specific point about how racism and police brutality can be very upsetting subjects to discuss as a black person, but as a black YouTuber, she still feels the need to appear upbeat and accommodating because white audiences are sensitive to these conversations. I used to make videos that explained racial issues to a skeptical white audience. And because I knew that they were skeptical, I tried to be disarming, and in being disarming, I had to water down the message. I had to remove my feelings, and I had to remove a lot of my thoughts in order to make myself and this issue more digestible. The problem is, is that racism isn't digestible. And even when she does that, she still receives backlash. There is no way to present racism in a disarming package without watering down the message of racism. These are all things I really hadn't thought about before watching her videos. So to everybody that's like me watching or making content while white, Wom -Q. this is a very important perspective to have on the platform. But yeah, Professor Flowers, great smaller channel, nice job. Jay Corviday is a very articulate, talented YouTuber who does video essays, commentary, and makes electronic music that absolutely kicks ass. His video essay on Shrek being queer culture is a 10 out of 10 video essay. Jay is also non-binary and has made many videos on non-binary issues. Until watching Jay's content, I had a very surface level understanding of what it means to be non-binary and the different ways in which the non-binary community is ostracized by parts of the left on top of the usual transphobes. So these were really helpful and also very well made and entertaining. His Sims 4 late stage capitalism challenge videos are, well, I mean, you heard the title, that's 
they're good. I also really appreciate the way he approaches criticisms of other leftist creators. He has no issue calling them on their bullshit, but does so in a productive way. Like when leftist streamer Xander Hall wouldn't stop using ableist slurs and didn't listen to his community's discomfort with this, Corviday challenged him on it and ended up debating him, which to me is surprising that that's something that you'd even have to debate, but whatever. Corviday was extremely patient and articulate about communicating the source of harm. He did the same when ContraPoints got cancelled on Twitter in late 2019 for casting Buck Angel, a vocal transmedicalist, as a voice actor in her video Opulence. Rather than piling on the onslaught, much of which was very harmful and unnecessary, ContraPoints actually ended up deactivating her Twitter during that time. But Jay was genuine and well-meaning in expressing their issues with Natalie's decision. As many others have said, when it comes to non-binary topics, it's probably best that we listen to non-binary people. So some other great non-binary YouTubers I found after watching Corviday are Cops Hate Mo, Luxander, and Ashton Daniel. Go check them out. Go check them out. Go check him out. Mia Mulder is a YouTuber with a background in history who makes really long, really good video essays on all sorts of topics. Her recent video on the safety of puberty blockers is really relevant right now, and as with most of her uploads, she gives the topic the necessary care and research, which in this case makes the video an extremely useful resource. She is funny and maintains this balance between theatrics and dry humor and the cadence of her delivery, which is very unique and engaging. It was also a very pleasant goof surprise when looking up videos about bread to find a bread tube video by a bread tuber about bread tube that was literally just her making some bread. Now you can enjoy your bread tube with whatever topping you would like. I'm enjoying some hummus myself. Have a wonderful day. 10 out of 10 April Fool's goof. Unlearning Economics is a channel that focuses on, well, you guessed it economic. He has an academic background on the subject, which shows in how thorough his content details these concepts. He released a three-part series titled Bread Tube vs. Economics, which comments directly on videos from ContraPoints, Sean, and Philosophy Tube, critiquing their portrayals of different leftist economic concepts and being extremely thorough with this analysis. The majority of his videos are focused on actually teaching the subject matter, and he's described his channel as fulfilling a gap in LeftTube's understanding of these issues. I would like this channel to help fill in the gap in economics content, and in this short series I want to comment directly on the few times where major bread tubers have discussed economics, because I think there are some, um, issues. And that's some really good stuff. If Three Arrows is Left Tube's historian, unlearning economics is, well, you know. The success of his BreadTube critique videos speaks to the growth of the community. People that watch prominent leftist YouTubers want to learn more, and want to know how they can improve their understanding of the things they talk about. And that, to me, is a really good sign. The structures are being erect built from within to help maintain this movement and the more of these we have the better off we will be i keep saying we like we're, it, we're all the avengers or something sorry for being cringe i'm posting cringe irl lonerbox is another massively underrated channel he manages to incorporate theory into long video essays that are also somehow concise and very funny he has a dry sense of humor that really shines when he's talking about goofballs like ben shapiro and the like he's got a knack for putting together a good production which is really evident in his video 4chan and how I was almost radicalized, which was enlightening with regards to the world of Warcraft to 4chan to Nazi pipeline. He talks about how this process ended with him bringing a race and IQ study to his biology teacher and his teacher had to set him straight, which is so fucking funny. Glad you made it out, dude. Keep up the good work. John the Duncan is a PhD researcher and as of recently a published academic, his videos are really informative. He draws on a lot of different sources to make his arguments and they're very cohesive while maintaining a sense of depth and humor. His primary focus of study is, according to his Twitter, human rights, austerity, and neoliberalism. His video, My Bullshit Job, Welfare, and Neoliberalism is a fascinating look at the frustrating, disheartening workplace of a UK welfare resource job and the factors which create the need for such jobs. His recent video, Critiquing the Lefty Debate Bro Culture, was very insightful and got me thinking a lot about the debate lord realm and how it fits into the leftist YouTube ecosystem. If there's one thing we can all agree on, it's, um, fuck that destiny. In his latest upload, Making a Girl Boss dives deep into girl boss feminism, and it's just really well done. Thorough, well written, well argued, well, 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 well. One of the coolest videos I've seen in a while is from YouTuber One Dime called Meme Warfare. I'll show some visuals from that right now, but it's, you know, such a unique artistic editing style. I say that as a video editor and visual artist, it's it's just maintained throughout this super long video while doing a great job of critically analyzing an interesting topic. This is another channel with under 10,000 subscribers, which blows my mind, but all of their videos are great.
Last channel, sitting at a cool 954 subs at the time of recording, YouTuber Marina Dove has three uploads on their channel, and these are all just such good videos. Their latest upload, Abortion, the Proletarian Feminist Perspective, draws on law, history, theory, and a great sense of humor to make some important observations and arguments about abortion and the various controversies surrounding the subject. Also, check out the- look at those damn- damn goddamn horns and cool costume this is what left tube's all about baby but let's you know let's get them to 1k thousand subscribers let's do it okay we're done it's done we're finally there conclusion slide now <laughs> closing arguments call to action it's gonna be emotional get ready for some of the bleeding heart socialism rose emoji <gasps> Remember last year, during the Democratic primaries, when all the Democratic candidates dropped out and endorsed Joe Biden at the same time, thus robbing the young, diverse coalition of working-class people from its groundbreaking mainstreaming of a socialist political movement, which in turn re-established the neoliberal status quo doctrine of America, and has just totally been super awesome since that joke that started. Great job, Joe Biden. Joe Biden. Joe Biden. Well, that sucked. I got a cool shirt out of it. It's very soft, but it sucked. I remember feeling in those moments a very distinct sense of deflation, bordering on apathy. If this is how our current system responds to the only genuinely progressive political movement we've had in a very long time, what's the point in even trying? Here's where I show a quote from a book. Uh, this is what leftist tubers do, and it's that's what they do, so I have to do it now. In Why Marx Was Right, Terry Eagleton describes the lull in the support of Marxism during the mid-70s. It was not illusions about the new capitalism, but disillusion about the possibility of changing it, which proved decisive. There were, to be sure, plenty of former socialists who rationalized their gloom by claiming that if the system could not be changed, neither did it need to be. Based on what is going on in the world, I have a feeling of hope regarding the system being changed, and that hope is amplified when I look at what people are doing on this platform. Form. Leftist YouTube represents an opportunity to grow these movements and potentially change systems in ways that have never been possible. We've looked at countless examples of people that are already doing this in one form or another. And in the interest of working towards a world of genuine equal rights, of an economic system that is not total complete utter garbage dark dog shit, we need more of it. Less infighting, less weird guys being weird writing books about how leftist YouTube is a CIA plot or some shit. More constructive criticism, less Twitter. I love Twitter. I've always loved Twitter. It's been my favorite app for a long time, but I've just realized in the past few months that it definitely does cause some problems. Every tweet you see is from some is in your phone and that's where it is and that's all that it means. Twitter was invented by Jack Sp Dorsey and some other guy so that you could tweet poo poo pee pee and that's why it's there and don't you forget it so yeah that's my call to action chill out on the timeline and make a youtube channel if you got something to say and if not subscribe to all four, 932 youtube channels that i just talked about in this video which are also linked in the description yay this video took a, over a month to make which is the longest i've ever spent on anything in my life if you'd like to see some behind the scenes footage or read from the 13,000 word scripts for some reason i actually just launched a patreon so for you know, just a couple bucks gain access to the bts content q a live streams patreon shit posts or have your name live on forever in the credits of each of my videos thanks gary also i got i made a discord server it's in the thing it's in the description too so all right bye yeah.